Hey guys, Cat72 here. Um, I want to go over a video with you guys on a product that I'm not getting paid for or I'm not getting any kind of um, kickback from uh, talking about this device. But uh, there's a few things I want to explain about the device. First of all, we're talking about a, GP a GPS unit. And I had my doubts before making this video because I had purchased it for my own personal use and I was trying to find the most cheapest GPS I can find on Amazon. And it turns out I found out I found one for about $44 and change, like 52 bucks with tax and everything. Uh, but I was kind of a little skeptical because it's one of those no name brands, uh, probably made from China. Um, not to knock off products from there. I mean, you know, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic. So I had my doubts. Anyway, I got it. I received it. I started playing around with it. Uh, the satellite uh, pickup on this device uh, is extremely f good. I'll admit that. Uh, the operating system that's in it is kind of another. It's first of all, like the display is only rated at uh, 800 by 480. It says it can play. Uh, music um and video files yes and no um the specs on the book won't even tell you let's see i'll show you what the product looks like first of all before we go any further here it is and it's made by mk sutary M K S U T A R Y. um comes with a manual like most everything does nowadays and um I went through it, but it was, it wasn't very thorough. It was, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it'll get you to understand what you need. You know what I mean? While you're using the device. Uh, but if you want to get more in debt, like for instance, on the topic of music and video play, it doesn't indicate what kind of um, video files and what kind of music files. So by me playing around with it, I do know this for a fact. It will play YouTube videos, so those are under um, MP4, MP3. I don't know if it was my SD card, but there was an issue where I tried to play an MPEG uh, .m3 file. That didn't seem to work. So as long as you're going to do your typical MP3, MP4, um, I don't know. I mean, let me... S so what I'm getting at, guys, is for the price and for what it does, I think it I think it's adequate. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But I'll get more in depth on that in the video. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, there's so much I want to cover with this device. Um, also, too, I'll, you're, I'm going to mention right now, I, I, I tinkered with the, um, the files myself. <clears throat> um, it pretty much comes rooted, so you, you have access into the file system. I got rid of a lot of states in the US and other foreign countries that I know that I was not gonna use because I wanted to drop down the size of the um, maps. Um, it went from a five gigabyte to a 512, because technically I'm only gonna travel in the US. And even then I deleted a lot of the US states because I don't see me going to like Wisconsin, Tennessee, Oklahoma, basically it's just texas and perhaps colorado because i've got um my son that lives out there so those are the only two maps i kept um i didn't delete them entirely i kind of saved them on my pc um so that i can always upload them later another thing i want to mention too before we go into this video on the amazon comments a lot of people were pretty much putting down this the supplier of this device and as well the, um, I guess the creator or the <clears throat> the person that kind of wrote the OS for it um, and, and, as is, and who is in charge of the map updates because there's one thing in particular that it, that it states about this device when you get it on Amazon, it says that it's, and that's what caught my attention is that the price one and two, it has a lifetime of maps free. And I said, well, you can't beat that. Um, and you're not having to use your data plan on your cell phone every time you want to use GPS. And besides, I was looking for 
a device that I can use for GPS and also upload my music library, which I'm still going at it. I mean, I've, I've got a lot to go on with music. That way it can play through my, um, my vehicle. Also too, um, I wanted Bluetooth capability so it can link to my stereo system, but it actually comes with an FM transmitter and I tested it out. It works pretty damn good. I mean, as long as you use a high frequency um, FM uh, frequency, uh, you you pretty much get a good connection and bear in mind I I'll show you later where I mount mine But I've mounted it right near my stereo system so that the connection is very good um, Every once in a while if you go under a tunnel or maybe something that that effect under a heavy highway You might lose this, you know, you might lose a little bit of a transmit trans um, Transmission on the frequency, but uh, for the most part it, it works really well um God, there's so much to go over, guys. I'm just jumping on everything. I, I just want to get this video started for you all. But there's a lot of things I need to mention about the device because, like I said, as I was go again, I got sidetracked. As I was mentioning, on Amazon they stated that the um, the person that's in charge of updating you with the maps was never responding to his emails. Uh, that uh, you know, it, it seemed like it was just a shoddy type of uh, support for the device. But hey, I bought the device three days ago. I emailed him on the very first day. Within two days, he emailed me back. Reason is because my maps was 2019 and I wanted the updated 2020. I didn't have any problems with it. He, respond he responded to my emails. He sent me the file, um, uploaded it, showed you the instructions on how to do it. As, as it states in Amazon, he states that he will send you a PDF file in the process of how to do it. I did it. It worked just fine. You know, I had no issues with it. But again, guys, if you're looking for a, 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 a cheap, I, I don't even want to say cheap because it, it works pretty damn good. I mean, it does what it's supposed to and the satellites pick up immediately. Like I pick up 13 GPS signals, uh, satellite signals within less than 30 seconds. So that's pretty damn good in my opinion. Um, okay, so the tinkering. As you all know, I mod everything I got. I went into the file systems, I deleted a lot of stuff. So what you're gonna see here, it's pretty much what you're gonna get. What I deleted was basically the different type of vehicles you can uh, represent. You th they got motorcycles, cars, buses, emergency vehicles, um, trucks, I, I got rid of all that. Also, the multi-languages, I got rid of that. Uh, all the maps other than what I said, which was the Texas, and Colorado, I deleted all that. Now, I don't expect anybody else to be doing that. I did it because I just didn't want the file system to be so big and I'm never gonna use that stuff. So I tinkered with it. Also, when I open up the GPS, and you'll see here in a minute, when I open up the G GPS software, you'll notice that it it says my vehicle name, which is a Kia Soul. I, I went into the BMP file and did that myself. So it's not like you're gonna, you're gonna get it this device and you can pretty much name your vehicle on the on the boot up screen. That was something I tinkered with on the file system. So I think I kind of covered what I wanted to go on. Let's go ahead and get into the device now. And I'm sorry for this long introduction to the device, but I really felt this was important to mention before we go further. So from this point on, let's just talk about the device itself. And along the way, if there's something that I remember about mentioning to you that I might have either tinkered with on the on the um, file system or anything else, we'll go over it at that point. All right, guys, let's get started. Hope I didn't bore you too much. Okay, guys, um, so let's go ahead and, like I said, let's get started. When you receive it, this is the box it comes in. As you can see, it's just real plain Jane. Um, Again, like I mentioned before, it does indicate that it does video, audio, photo, and ebooks, but it doesn't specify uh, the file formats. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, you guys already know I opened this up, but I put everything back in its package just to kind of go over with you guys what you um, what you can expect. Um, you do get the manual. Uh, this here is the gentleman that actually um, sent me the updated maps uh, file and the PDF instructions. So as I said before in the intro, I'm not sure why people are complaining that he does not respond. I mean, he did for me with no issues. Um, 
very happy about that. Um, so you get that a response card, if you want to call it that, or support card. And then, of course, the GPS user manual. Again, guys, it looks very thick, which would give you the impression that it's very informative. However, it's only about five or six pages, and the pages roughly only indicate your basic settings, which pretty much for the average user, that's all you really need. You know, setting the voice language on navigation, um, the system language, the volume, the brightness, uh, the view of the GPS signals that you're picking up, uh, how to go about the path, which we'll go over that here in a minute. I'll explain what that means. And just a rundown of the basic stuff you would need to know, the date and time, uh, the navigation menu, what it looks like, um, some other uh, pre-installed apps that could probably, um, you can probably find beneficial. It's got a calculator, it's got an invert, um, uh, a metrics inverter and whatnot. Um, it shows you how to input your destination and that's it. And then you start off in another language. So you see you're only getting about that much info on, on this little pamphlet. Uh, and as we already went through the whole deal, it's not really a whole lot of uh, uh, information. Um, like I said, it doesn't indicate what kind of file formats for the video. Um, and music files, uh, what else? Um, how to work the menus, because there's some certain features that are kind of a little weird. So we'll go over that. Pretty well packaged. It comes in this really nice, sturdy, um, air-pocketed um, bubble, bubble wrap. And then it comes inside this nice plastic sleeve. Again, I already... Um, opened up mine, but it comes with a pillable a protective layer, which you can't see it, but there's actually a protective film on there. Um, so don't take that off. Just pull the little tab that'll come with it. This is the actual finish of it. So that's gonna leave you with a, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's actually a, a, a screen protector on there. And then I haven't used any of this, but this is a, uh, a bracket, which mounts to the, I don't know if you can see those little grooves here. There's one there. <clears throat> excuse me and there's two here and basically this has the exact same feature you got a groove here a groove there and a groove here basically you just uh, snap it on and that'll kind of look like that so to speak I'm not gonna do it now and then to add to that you get your suction cup and these connections will match up to the back of this and pretty much once it locks in place now you have your um, suction cup uh, holder and then uh, I, another thing I liked about this is um, of course you well here let me get to the point is you get a sunshade how cool is that you know uh, I haven't figured out how to put this on yet maybe we'll go over that later when I show you how I mounted it in my vehicle uh, and then, of course, you get your power cord. And by the way, guys, this is just a um, mini USB power cord, not a micro. It's a mini. All right. So now let's get all this good stuff out of the way and let's get into the actual unit itself. Oh, and by the way, on the back of this... Um, mounting bracket you have a little style this here i'll see if i can pull it out for you there you go i don't really think you need it i mean it works fine with the fingers i don't really see why you would need that but it's pretty cool that they uh, they package it with it so getting to the uh mixertory tablet you have your power button on the top left if my camera will focus and then you have your um uh, earplug jack, your SD card, which I've already got one installed um, with a little bit of music. Uh, that's basically nothing. And then again, your mini USB port. Um, that's pretty much it uh, as far as the unit itself. In the back, it gives you a demonstration of precautions to take once the battery shows these signs. Um, here it gives you um, made in China, uh, the voltage, 
and how many gigabytes see guys the unit came with eight gigs right so you remember earlier i said i modified the file system uh that's eight gigs not including the os so in all the the maps that i got alone took five gigabytes so you're only talking three gigabytes of space um even though you do have the usd micro card right the us uh, the sd micro card which can compensate for your music and videos whatever else you're going to put on this thing the fact that I reduced the OS dramatically in the size, file size, it up to me it operates a lot faster and more sharper and quicker uh, because it's not bogging down the fact that you're pretty much using the entire, almost the entire eight gigabytes of space. So anyway, let's power this thing on. Just hold it for a few seconds. There you go. Oh, I actually had mine in sleep mode. Okay, when yours boots up, you'll see the mix. Make surgery logo and then this will pop up. Okay, starting from the top left to the right, this is gonna be your navigation, which pops up. You can open and close it by tapping it. Oh shoot, I didn't wanna open it yet. Okay, well, you see, you guys won't get that Kia Soul. I put that there myself. Let's go back, I didn't mean to. Let's go ahead and get out of here. I wanted to show you guys how this works. So you would click it once to open and click it again to close. The, the touch screen is real responsive, guys, but I'm trying to look at what I'm doing through my camera versus what I'm actually doing on the tablet. So I'm kind of missing the spot. So again, you would open up. That's your navigation. You click it again. That'll close it. You got your calendar, which I haven't even. Oh, yeah, it is set up. If you tap it, it'll widen it up and you can see the date and uh, the date. And then the same same thing, you can close it by tapping it. Um, the third icon to the going to the right is going to be uh, wallpapers pre-installed. Um, I actually wanted to modify the file system to put my own, but I didn't get that far yet because I kind of wanted to push this video out just so you guys can see. Hopefully y'all can see that. I know there's a shadow of me standing there with my camera, but uh, that's what you're looking at. So wallpapers. Let's go back to the one I like, which is that green field. Same thing, if you tap on it again, it'll exit you in and exit you out. If you tap on the time, there's nothing gonna happen. If you tap on the uh, SD card, nothing's gonna happen. Battery, nothing's gonna happen. But if you click on that little, um, looks like a Wi-Fi signal, bear in mind it's not, that's gonna be your FM transmitter. Uh, the way this works is if you power it on, uh, mine's already already set to 107.9. That's what works best for me on my vehicle. But you can alter through the um, the megahertz frequency on the device, this device, the the, um, the GPS, and match that to your vehicle. And it's pretty much like Bluetooth. Okay. On the bottom left, that's going to be your multimedia, your music, your videos, and your photos. Um, I don't have any. Here's the thing. Um, I got my music, uh, here, even though it says video, um, that's because these were downloaded as an actual music video. Uh, but if you would have just done your typical, uh, MP3, MP4 music file, it would be located here. And then these are your up and down, uh, scroll buttons to search your music. In this case, I've got my music over on video, uh, which is located on the SD card. And in my music, I made that folder. And then these are just a couple of uh, folders I've created so far. I, I've got a long way to go. Um, you would click on that. Uh, we won't do any music infringements here or copyright. You click it, it can expand the screen. And uh, just so you see it, we'll start playing. But again, I don't wanna get copyrighted for anything. I'll just do a quick, that's how loud the speaker is. which is located here. Um, not very, not, not super loud, but I mean, you can hear what's going on. Uh, but that's just to show you that it does play uh, MP3 and MP4 files. Uh, here's the photos. I have a uh, .mpeg mpg file here that I wanna show you. Um, just to show you that it does work. There you go. And that's just to show you that it stayed on 
um, it's able to actually open up those particular uh, fo uh, photos. Um, let me see, I think I did 800 by 400 where I actually did the modification. There you go. So see, yours won't have that. I actually modified the um, on the file system for it to say Kia Soul. So when it boots up, um, you can actually see that. I thought that was pretty cool. And then on the bottom, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can rotate, go to the next uh, photo, uh, go to the previous photo. Um, you can expand it, <clears throat> excuse me, like I did. And then this here is um, to get rid of the uh, border. If you go up to the top right, that's a menu. It takes you right back to where you were uh, in order to get to that photo. Uh, next, you have ebooks. I don't really have anything on here to show you guys, but that's where your ebooks would be. Um, that's just the file system. Um, you do have access to it. I can show you real quick. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't tinker with that unless you know what you're doing. Uh, but again, you would have ebooks. You got a few games here, um, pretty basic games, but pretty interesting at the same time. Uh, something to keep you uh, keep you occupied. Um, Boxman Link, they got Gobang, uh, they got uh, Othello, I guess is how you pronounce it. I played a couple of these, they're pretty cool. Uh, they got something like Snake. Uh, and then you got your tools. Uh, this is where you have your calculator, uh, your calendar, and your uh, unit converter. So calculator, obviously, that's what it looks like. Um, you exit out here. Boy, I'm having trouble really trying to focus on the tablet at the ca and the camera at the same time. You have your calendar, and then you've got your inverter, which is pretty cool. Like, you know, you can do length, weight and mass, cubic and capacity, square and area, uh, length, circular, angular, power, pressure, speed, temperature, you know, let's try temperature real quick. Let's do Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let's say today in Texas, it was gonna be 103. I guess it would be 39.4444 uh, centigrade. That's pretty cool. You never know when you might need to use that. Uh, that's under tools. And then uh, far right to the bottom would be the settings. Here you can adjust your volume. That's what you would hear. We'll keep it there so it's not annoying. You have your option of the tap to be loud, off, or soft. Well, why don't we do soft? All right, you got your backlight. Um, I have mine set to low because this screen's pretty bright as it is, to be honest with you. Uh, that's another cool thing, I think. It's pretty bright just being at, the, at its lowest setting. Uh, let me show you what it would look like if I would have put it full blown. I mean, you can see where it's already affecting the camera. Um, but yeah, we'll bring it back down. And then you have your choice of either having it always on, 10 second, 30 second, one minute. I think that's the two minute, three minute, and always on delay. Um, here's your FM frequency, like I mentioned earlier. Nav path, you can have it, you can have it set to where the, um, the GPS will run immediately upon startup. Um, I have mine set off. And then the navigation path uh, is where you'll actually find the file system that it needs in order to run the GPS. So this is the file system that I needed to get from the gentleman on the email for the upgraded part of it. Uh, it's labeled as BM20, but within that folder, you will then see the Primo executable file, which by the way, I believe this runs on Windows CE 6.0. Um, and what this will do is you're telling the system that when it starts, you want it to pull that data, that application, and that's what'll get your GPS started. If you don't adjust the Navi path, it won't start the GPS, just so you know. This is your date and time. You've got calibration. I'm not gonna calibrate it because it doesn't need it, where it's just more wasted time on the video. You have your choice of languages. 
Then you got the next screen, which you can restore all settings, gives you the GPS info. As you can see, that's how many satellites I've got going right now. And that was uh, me just barely powering it on. I've got up to, uh, I don't know, quite a lot of quite a lot of signals. That's pretty damn good. Um, let's back out. You got your system info, which is the actual operating system on this device. Um, USB, when you go to mass storage, that's basically um, telling it you want to read the information or put information on this SD card. If you go to MS Active Sync, it's strictly working on the inner um, card or the inner um, flash flash chip, chip that's on this unit. Uh, I had that set the other way because, like I said, I just uploaded the maps that uh, I received on the on the email. Um, and then here, auto start. I believe that's probably just um, <clears throat> again. That's what I'm saying. This doesn't tell you anything about it. The manual. I'm assuming what auto start pertains to is um, maybe power. If you have it plugged it into your vehicle, it senses the power on and it'll automatically turn on. That's the only thing I can assume. And then go to previous. Okay, so now let's get into the main thing, which is the GPS. So once you click this, it's going to boot up. Again, mine says Kia Soul, yours will not. I pretty much made mine that way. Uh, it's going to ask you for some information. Um, I took the length of my vehicle and whatnot. How many axles, maximum allowed weight. Uh, I don't have any freight, but if you were a truck driver, you would list what you have in the vehicle. Flammables, non-flammables, poisonous gases. The reason why it needs that information, because if there's a route that you're taking that doesn't permit this to be on that specific highway or expressway or freeway, It'll let you know and set up a detour for you um, where you are allowed. Just hit done once you're done with that. <clears throat> Here's your actual map. On the bottom left, if you click that, that's going to exit you out, which we're not going to do that. This is kind of like your user interface settings. Um, that first little, if you want to call that like a, uh, I guess that would be like a, I don't know, looks to me like some sort of a chemical mixing glass. If you click that, um, you can skip the navigation menu. You can capture the screen. Let's say you wanted to take a snapshot of the location you're at or the coordinates, longitude and latitude, you can take a snapshot. That actually just enables a little function on the screen that shows a camera. Uh, desaturated preview map, I have mine set on. You can skip the preview map, the cockpit type. I guess we can go over that now. So the cockpit type is basically, if you look at the map, right, it changes the layout. That's all it does. So you've got your speed and your speed limit and time over here. Um, if you were to go back, which we'll do that now, I, again, I'm having trouble trying to focus on doing this while I'm looking at, at it in the, in the camera. If you go back to your user interface settings, and let's say you wanted to change that to, let's say, default. This is what it'll look like now. And it's going to ask you to restart. Just go ahead and restart it. It won't take that long. And uh, just hit done. And then when you go to your maps, now it's on this side. Remember earlier, this information was on the opposite side. So it's pretty much just how you want, they call this the cockpit, how you want that to look. Let's go ahead and uh, change another one just so you guys can see. So we had profile one, this is profile two. Yes, restart. And just hit done, hit the map. And see, now it just looks a little different. You got this set up now. So it's just really personal preference, guys. Um, Let's go ahead and go down. I want to set mine back to one. I like that one. The stat mode, now that's going to pertain to, <clears throat> let's go ahead and restart it. That's going to pertain to the layout that you see right as it boots up. Um, this. this, this screen right here is what that's going to change. I'll show you what I mean. So we change that to, um, instead of default, let's do no more. That's going to give you the full blown layout. 
So now you have your destination down here, your route, op route options, your show map, and then of course that user interface settings tab that we were messing with and your power, uh, your exit, in, exit out button down here. And then it gives you all these extras up here to, to look at. Um, I would go over these now, but I'm gonna do it in a different a different way to show you the next icon on the bottom. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's exit out. Oh wait, I didn't mean to go there. I won't go over all of them, guys, because I mean, it's just, there's so many different things to do on this. We'll just rush through them real quick. Uh, let's do. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the stat mode. Like if you do list, now you got a list. Uh, if you do uh, two by two, now you've got it looking like that. Um, so that's all that does. Just bear in mind that this icon is only for the layout of the of the um, GPS um, profile. Let me go back to default. I kind of like it that way. Um, you can expose the linear compass. You can have backlight details. You can save the N uh, the N M E A. I don't really use that. Um, advanced speed limit. That just means it'll tell you and warn you of speed limits before you get to that point on your travels. You can calibrate the screen. Um, auto close highway panel. These are just settings whether you want them to show or not in this area. Um, and then you go to these settings here. These are a little bit more tedious. I don't know if I'll go over all of them, guys. The video would be extremely long. This is going to handle all your sound. You can do your volume, right? These are all your volume, your sound settings. You can adjust your language. Now here, guys, is where I'm telling you I set mine up. I mean, I tinkered with the file system. So all you're going to see is U.S. and English. I got rid of everything else. Uh, Australian, European, Brazilian. I got rid of all that just to save space. In your in your all's case, you'd see more options than that. Uh, you can go to advanced settings. Um, you can have it announce distance next maneuver, meaning turn left, turn right uh, beforehand. Uh, uh, verbosity, I set mine to verbose, minimal or compact. I like to hear everything that needs to be said as I'm traveling, so I have it set to that. Speed warning settings, you can adjust uh, that you want audio and visual or you want it disabled or just visual. I have mine set to audio and visual. Um, speed limits always visible. It'll be on your GPS maps as you travel. Um, I This came defaulted to 110% of the limit. Uh, you can adjust that for speed limit purposes just so it informs you when you're speeding according to your preference. Um, alert point settings, um, alerts, this will give you an idea of what they're referring to. It'll check for speed cameras, mobile speed cameras, built-in speed cameras, red light camera, etc. It gives you a list of all the alert alerts that it can give you uh, beforehand if you activate it. I have mine set that way just to test it out, really. I'll probably take it off later. And then warning alerts are like curves and corners, lanes and passing, general warnings, that kind of stuff. Within how many feet do you want to be warned? Uh, lane passing, so forth and so on. Um, that's what that is. Let's go back. Custom quick menu. This is the little menu option that you saw earlier when we went into that different interface. It just lets you change what you want to have exposed up on this screen here. So I already have mine set up the way I like, but let's say I didn't want find addresses up on this top left corner. You can click it. Let's say I wanted favorites. Now favorites will be exposed, but let's go back to what I had on there. Well, we'll just leave it for now, but that's all that does. And your options are from top to bottom. You've got favorites, overview, find address, combined search, pretty much just everything you see here. It's just another way for you to set it up the way you like uh, your preference. What did I have on there? Music? You know, let's go back and put music on there just to show you guys real quick. Right there. And there, now my music will show. Um, driving time management, I'm not going to mess with that. That's for truckers. I'm not a truck driver, but, um, just to give you an idea, it would like, let's say you're traveling and you need to take a break within, uh, four hours and 30 minutes. It'll let you set up how long you want to be driving, right? Continuous driving. And then of course, what, how long you want to take a break, 
and then minimum brake, maximum brake, vice versa. I think truck drivers could explain this more, but you get the gist of it. Um, traffic, I, I, that's if you want to keep a history of traffic areas on your maps. Uh, that way, if you come across those again, it'll give you a warning indicating, hey, this area is known for traffic at this hour or this time. Uh, I don't have mine set to that. Again, I'm just trying to save memory and space on this um, eight gigabyte um, GPS unit. Route settings, um, I've already adjusted mine. The vehicle I named it Kia Soul. Navigation mode is on road. You can always change that to off road. Uh, route planning method, I chose fast, but you have an option for short, economical, easy. Um, highways, if you want those to be exposed on the on your travels. Period charge, I don't care for that. We don't have any tolls or ferries here in Texas, so I pretty much got rid of all that. I don't see myself driving on unpaved roads, so I got rid of that. Um, user profiles, oops. If you wanted to set up a particular profile for yourself, you can do so. I, I don't need to do that. Um, map settings, you can do the... You can do a 3D view, you can do a 2D view. Um, viewpoint, you can have it normal, you can have it high or low. That's just the angle of the map that you're looking at. I'm just gonna have mine set to, I kind of like high because it gives you an overall advanced look of what's yet to come. Automatic overview, I disabled mine. I don't want it on, I don't see the point of it. Um, colors, let's not even get into that. You can change the colors, uh, day and night. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. We won't get into that. You got so many colors to choose from. Um, it just goes on and on, you know, depending to your color preference. Let me see if I can get back to my default. There you go. Um, that's what that does. And then night map color, same scenario. If you want to change the different colors of that. Here's your 3D vehicle gallery. Again, guys, under car, you would have a multitude of choices. I only kept the sports car. I deleted everything else just, to, again, to save space. Uh, pedestrian, you're not going to find anything because I deleted them. Yeah, see? Normally, it would have a person standing there. And then other vehicles, that's where you would have your fire trucks and alarm. Um, fire trucks and emergency vehicles. Again, I deleted mine because I just simply don't. I'm trying to save the space. Um, so what else we have? You can set your landmarks on, your buildings on, 3D terrain on, or you can have it off. Just depends on your preference. I'll leave mine off just so it's not using so much processing power. Um, 3D terrain off. Track logs, I have mine off. Again, trying to save space. I don't need it collecting my logs. Place markers, I've already got them set up. And if you click it, you can choose which markers you want, airport, accommodations, automotive, business, cafe or bar, community, finance. I only have mine set to gas stations, but you get the gist of it. It's points of interest, if you will. And on, on a lot of these options that you choose, if you ever hit the more option, it'll just either have a reset, save, or it'll give you some other small uh, option. It's either between one or two other options. Uh, it's not like it's going to lead you to a whole bunch of other, um, you know, tweaks that you can do. Visual guidance, again, it's all about what you want posted on your drive, your travels. I don't care for tunnel view. I don't care about route progress bar. Again, I'm trying to minimize the processor that's in this thing just so it works a lot quicker. And um, I have chose to offer the congestion detour on highways, offer real-time route alternatives. I find those to be kind of important and then offer hints upon detour, but you can set it up the way you prefer. Um, the display, um, same thing. You can have, I disabled menu animations. That just means it gives a, a nice little transition from one screen to the next. Again, I'm trying to save on processing power. You can change the skin, uh, the skins default or day, or I mean, I'm sorry, default night or default day. Um, night skin, same principle. Right now you can control the backlight, you know, you can higher it or lower it. Um, the region, um, pretty much where you at. Again, you're not gonna see any, in your case, you'll see a whole bunch of different countries and states here. I don't, I deleted all mine just to save space. Units and formats, I thought this was pretty cool. Um, 
it's what you're going to be working on. I chose miles and feet as opposed to miles in yards or kilometers. Um, miles per gallon, you can do kilometers, kilometers, um, UK settings. Um, I set mine just basically to US standards. We're almost done, guys. Trip monitor, I have all mine off. I don't need to be monitoring my trips. Just like log collections, I don't need any of that being collected. And then start wizard is kind of where we got to how I put my information there. It asks you uh, what kind of voice uh, do you want. Again, this was in multi-languages. The only thing you'll see on mine are English, because uh, US, because I deleted everything else. Uh, to, what it, to find out what it sounds like, here's an example. Have a nice trip. Drive carefully. And then if you chose like a, I don't know. Have a nice trip. Drive carefully. Yeah, it's just your preference. And 50 meters, turn left. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Let me go back to female. Have a nice trip. Drive carefully. All right. And then it asks you the miles and feet. It just, it's just a pre-set up, just so it knows what your actual setting, your setup configuration is going to be. And then of course, if you ever want to reset all this back to standards, just hit reset and it'll put everything back the way it was. Um, that pretty much handles the settings part. So then when you go to destination, of course, it's just find an address, find a place, or find yourself on the map. If you click that, it'll pretty much just tell you where you're at. Um, then you have the ability to zoom in, zoom out. Uh, if you hit more, this is where you can check for places around the cursor, add to favorites, show the cursor position, show current position, add an alert point, historical traffic. Again, I have mine disabled. Um, if you hit up here, it'll give you your coordinates. This is where the snapshot would come in handy. You can either add that to your favorites or if I had um, snapshot enabled like we went over earlier, I could have taken a snapshot of this um, and it would just save that in your photos. So let's go back. Um, that's all under destination. If you go to route options, you can create a route. I am not gonna go over that because I simply don't see myself ever using that. And then of course, if you're gonna do that, you can adjust your route settings and then that'll take you back to um, where we were earlier when I demonstrated that. And then like I mentioned, anytime there's something more to be added to the screen you're on, just hit the more button and it'll tell you. In this case, you can just reset all the settings. And then lastly, you got more, and that's that screen that I told you about that you can adjust any way you want. So remember we took the um, favorites folder off and we put the music player on, so now you've got that. That's what the music player looks like. Um, picture viewer, I don't have any photos. Unit converter, you can do length, temperature, speed, fuel economy, power, let's do power. So here you go, it can, you type in the power source as voltage and it can uh, tell you what it is in kilowatts, horsepower, megawatts, and so forth and so on. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, clothing, I found interesting. So if you ever wanted to know shoes for women uh, in different countries like Europe, Japan, United Kingdoms, and US, it tells you the differences. That's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And it does dresses, pants, shoes, shirts, hats. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, fuel economy, if you wanna set this up, guys, it'll just give you an idea of how much fuel you're consuming on your travels. You can also do a maintenance schedule. I'll probably be using this. You pretty much would add your um, oil change and then it would probably give you a an, uh, a notification that it's almost time to change your oil. I thought that was pretty cool. Sunrise and sunset pretty much just tell you tells you where you're at on the map. Here we are, and nighttime's yet to come. You can do details, and it tells you when sunrise and sunset is. Pretty cool. Um, trip monitor. It's not going to be. I'm never going to use that. But if you guys wanted to monitor your trips, you can um, again initiate it. If you go to more. You can go to trip monitor settings and it'll pretty much give you the information you need uh, to go from there. And then just hit record. Uh, country information. I thought this was pretty cool. Albania, Algeria, America, Samonia. I didn't delete these guys because I thought it was pretty cool. Because if you look at this, for instance, let's say we've never been to Barbados and we wanted to know what those standards were. You click that 
and there it says in the city you can go 37 in the country 30 uh 37 expressway 30 uh, pretty much 37 maximum blood alcohol content in that region is 0, 0.0 permitted interesting i thought that was pretty cool i didn't want to delete these let's say we go to brazil again more information well, let's see what it would be in the u.s i guess i could just hold down on it <laughs> uh lmnopqr should be coming up uh, let's see ooh, ooh, ooh. well let's see what it is in alabama wow interesting it doesn't tell you what the alcohol content is there huh let's see texas it's pretty high here i can tell you that much uh texas Nope, it won't tell you. Interesting. But anyway, you see what that's all about. Uh, and then if you go to the last ones, it's your calculator. And then you've got your... Did I hit it? Or is that not it? Oh, I'm sorry. Down at the bottom. I was hitting the wrong one. It's down here back. Uh, help. Uh, I deleted the demo just to save space again, but it would just run a little map demo to show you how it all comes about. And then about, it's just going to give you the information that you need as far as, um, if this is being run by iGo Primo, that's the map software. It shows you licenses, credits, legal, your SWID uh, code and statistics. That's kind of personal there, guys. I won't expose that. Um, you can, uh, what I mean by that is if I show my credits or not my credits, this, you could probably access uh, the iGo Primo website and use those credentials um, to update your maps and whatnot. Let's see what else we got. And that's it, guys. That's the sum of it. Um, I don't have any issues with it. It works really well. Like I said, I wanted to talk about what I did in the beginning because a lot of people were knocking the device as being, not the device itself, but the support. And I don't have that issue with it. I think it works just fine. I mean, it's pretty quick and responsive. It just... I'm having trouble focusing on looking into the camera and then touching the screen, but um, it works just fine, you know. Uh, just wanted to share all that with you in case you guys were interested in this unit. I would say it's worth the money for 40 to 50 bucks. I mean, I'll put the link in the description and uh, you get the support. Although, like I said, if you read the Amazon comments, it'll state that, you know, they never got an email, the guy never responded. That's not true. Um, I'm here to tell you it's not. Uh, he responded to me uh, two days after I sent him an email. So I thought, and it was the weekend, mind you, so that might be why there was the two day delay. Had it been during the week, um, might not have been the scenario. He might have responded that same day. So, but yeah, let me see here real quick. Why don't we do a destination? Oh, cool. It gives you a layout. Um, I don't know. Uh, eh, we don't have to do all that, guys. I mean, you can... Here, why don't we do this? This will be faster. I didn't want to type in all the information. Oh, well, let's do a gas station. See how instant that is? It's going to calculate, go. And there you go. It's ready to go. Look how fast that is. It's ready. So, yeah. Pretty cool. All right, guys, let me go now and show you how I mounted it on my vehicle, and then I can demonstrate the FM transmitter, and I think we've pretty much covered it all. I'm sorry about the glare of my shadow here on the screen, but uh, we were going to get that either way. Um, this screen just casts a, sh uh, a shine pretty well. Oh, another thing, too, now that we're talking about this. Uh, there is a slight issue with, if you're looking at it from an angle, you can see that from left to right, you can see it with no issue. However, if you do from top to bottom, you get that discoloration and loss of uh, quality. But again, if you do left to right, no problem. But if you do this, kind of kind of hazes it hazes out. Um, so okay, guys, that's going to pretty much conclude what I have to say about the device itself and how to um, go about setting it up, some of the features. I'm trying to get out of here. Um, let me see, is it here? Yeah.
Okay. So hopefully y'all found this informative. Oh, I did open this up because again, I'm a modern. Um, the battery is kind of small. It rests, it rests in this area here. Um, it's probably a little bit bigger than this, this square uh, sticker that you see here. What I'm going to do later, and I'll probably put it on another video, guys, is I'm going to open this up again and replace it with a much bigger battery uh, to have a longer um, time with it. Um, I want to say on average now, you probably get about three and a half to four hours of constant use. Okay, and now this is how I set it up in my vehicle. I have it on now. And for my situation, it worked out just fine. The suction cup actually held on to this plastic insert here or this uh, pocket compartment on the Kia. And as you can see, it's holding just fine. Um, no issues. I like it. It's pretty decent. It's at a good visual point. Um, I'm looking right at it. Uh, even though you do see that reflection from the um, outside, I'm not seeing it here on my me looking at it. That's because my head's uh, about another foot above this camera. So technically, I'm looking at it kind of like this, and I don't see that glare. But um, I wanted to tell you all something real quick. Another thing on the settings is that if you go to, um, so like right now, you notice I don't have power connected to it. I actually adjusted a hole in the very back where I might run a power cable from here and down into the back. And then it comes down to here and it goes into my power port. Um, I made another video where I was using an Android device for that. I could possibly run the cable back in there for this, which is probably what I'll do, but on another video. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna plug it in direct. Um, cause I want to show y'all something. Give me a second here. Or I might just leave it like this and, um, hide the cable back here behind this panel. Kind of like what I did with my radar detector and it doesn't look so bad. You know what I mean? Um, but I'll think about it. I might just run it to the back, back end of the, uh, the car, but here's what I want to demonstrate to y'all. Uh, remember earlier we were talking about what is that on and off uh, function? Well, here's what it does. If you um, go ahead and go to uh, settings, go to next, auto start. If you click that on, that's a pretty cool feature because what will happen now is, um, let's say I shut my car off. So we're going to demonstrate that by pulling the cable out instead of having to turn on my vehicle. So let's say um, I, I turned off my car it'll shut down in five seconds. And then let's say I turned on my car, which is applying power to it. There you go. So that's pretty cool because, you know, I can leave it in plugged in fully at all times and it will know when to shut off and when to turn on uh, depending on uh, the position of the ignition switch. Um, so therefore it's always got a constant charge and I don't have to worry uh, about it uh, becoming drained on the battery. Oh, the other thing too is, let me demonstrate real quick the FM frequency. So let me turn on my car for that. It did that because the power fluctuation when I actually turned on my vehicle. Um, let me shut the AC off so there's not so much noise. Okay, so right now I'm gonna turn on my vehicle. You're gonna hear all that static but that's because I don't have it on. As soon as I turn it on, you hear that? Extreme quiet. So I have it set to 95.3 and also 95.3 on the FM uh, receiver. So as you can hear, every sound you hear from now is coming out of the speaker of, of my car. And then of course you can always um, adjust all these other keys to whatever stations you want to listen to. But let me demonstrate the qual sound quality on this. So let's go ahead and go to multimedia, video. Again, I won't play something too long because I don't want to get copyright infringements and all that kind of mess. So let's do, oh no, let's do Phil Collins. Just listen to the quality.
there you have it guys that's coming right out of the fm frequency i can put it full blast and you can barely hear that static but as you heard through the music you couldn't even really tell and if it ever comes down to it what you can do is basically run an rca uh, rca input bring it down and run it into your auxiliary port and that'll that'll make a full connection without having to worry about any static but for me that sounds pretty decent okay guys i think i've talked long enough i think we went over just about everything we possibly could with this uh unique little probably misguided and misinformed device i'm happy with it, it cost me like 40 bucks plus tax i'll put the link in the description about 52 bucks or something like that but hey i'm not having to use my data plan and uh with all the uh, features on it i think it's going to be a win-win so all right guys this is cast 72 i hope you enjoyed the video and all right i'll see you on the next one peace out guys